Hello to everyone that's joining us today. Um, we are here at the MarTech Alliance Marketing and Technology Book Club. Um, my name is Carlos Doughty. I'm the founder of the MarTech Alliance. If you don't know us already, you can jump on to martechalliance.com and find out a little bit more. Today, I'm here with Tim Hughes, who's a social selling pioneer. He um, is also the author of this fantastic book, Social Selling, which we'll be chatting about in detail today. It would be great to flip over to you to give us a little bit more background about yourself, Tim. Yes, so um, I've been in sales for 25 years. Um, last 10 years, I was at Oracle Corporation where I was involved in a sales transformation. And in, in that sales tra transformation, we took people from selling uh, on-premise systems to selling cloud-based systems. Uh, during that time, we taught people to um, uh, storyboard, um, to storytell, um, and social selling. And the spin-up for that was I started blogging about it. I got a, um, a book deal, which you pointed out was that the, that's the English version. There's also a Chinese version. Um, and um, um, I've been involved now uh, with social for, I've been on social now for nine years, uh, five years doing social selling. And where can everybody find you online? Um, uh, they can either find me on my Twitter, which is Timothy underscore Hughes, and Hughes is H-U-G-H-E-S, um, or I'm on LinkedIn, which is at Timothy Hughes Social Selling. Great stuff. Um, we also have some very exciting news. Um, Tim is going to be one of our keynote speakers at the MarTech Alliance Festival, which will be taking place the 31st of October. Um, we won't chat too much about that, but there'll be more details announced very soon. But we're really excited to have Tim involved. Thank you. It's, it's, it looks like it's going to be a great event. Indeed, indeed. Right, let's jump in. Um, Tim, could you tell us your exact definition of social selling? Uh, yes. Uh, the, uh, at the moment, um, because of the internet, there's, been a whole, there's a whole bunch of bias dysfunction. So um, in the days when I first started selling, if you wanted to deal with a... Um, uh, if you want to deal with a company, what you did was that you rang up and you asked for a brochure and one would turn up three days later. Now, if we want information, we just go online and search for it. Um, whether we're looking for a pair of Ugg boots or, or whether we're looking for a £100,000 Mercedes car, everybody is going online and, and searching for things. Um, and CB research says that um, people are now 57% of the way through the buying process before they actually start contacting a salesperson. Um, now it may be 35%, it may be 85% of, of the way, but actually they don't need to do what they did in the past, which is ring up a salesperson and deal with it. In fact, they will actively avoid dealing with salespeople. Great. Thanks very much. Um, in your book, you talked a lot about how social selling isn't just social media. It's much, much more. Yes. And one of the core things is around community um, development. You know, it's something that we at the MarTech Alliance massively believe in. Obviously, this online book club in itself is Absolutely. a good example. Yes. Um, you talked about examples of companies that possibly have taken their eye off the ball and the likes of Blockbuster. Um, are there other companies right now that you think are going down that same, same road where they possibly haven't appreciated the changes that have taken place in the selling space? Um, yes, um, we're talking to a number of them at the moment. Um, I mean, you know, Toys for Us is a classic example where, um, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, a massive brand with a, with a, with a lot, lot, large footfall, um, has just, you know, suddenly gone to the wall and that's because they're not active on social. Um, if, if you look at, if, if we, if, if we all believe that we're, people are buying online, um, and you know, I don't know how many Christmases, you know, since I, you know, last Christmas I bought everything online. Um, and, um, if we all believe that we're all searching online, then companies have to have a social presence and they have to be talking about what they do online. So when we're searching, we pick that up. Now I'm not necessarily talking about SEO on your website. I'm talking about, uh, content that will allow people that are self-educating to actually find that content and actually understand what they do. So I'll give you an example. Um, a friend of mine runs a, a baby massage um, company, um, but um, what they, and they have a website which tells you how great baby massage is, but everybody says their product is great. You know, name me a company that says that their product is the second best in the, in the, uh, in the world. 
Um, so what happens is that because you tell everybody it's great, it just becomes noise. Um, and what what um, uh, um, what they just found was that they actually had people come into their website at three o'clock in the morning and actually buying a product, buying the product. And what they realized was that what that was, was that was parents that couldn't sleep um, and, um, uh, and therefore and they happened to come across them. But what they started to do was actually create content like the top 10 ways that you can, get, uh, as, a par- as a new parent, you can actually get to sleep or te- you know, five ways you can get your child off to sleep. And it's using that content that actually drove people to the website because that content was educational and insightful mm-hmm and non-salesy and non-pitchy that people found it and consumed it and went, oh, this sounds like a good idea. Maybe a, a, a baby, a massage would, would help. And so it's, it's that, that, that um, um, the way that now people need to sell rather than doing, hey, buy my stuff and do you want to buy a watch? And I've got mm-hmm. some on my coat. Um, there's an expectation that you need to educate and, and provide insight to people through the user content. Completely. And one other thing that really jumped out was you talked a lot about change makers, about social community yes. managers, um, how they're really critical to driving your social selling. One of the things I found really interesting, so my, my background's marketing, and okay. you talked about how possibly there are times when marketers maybe hijack social media mm. and that for, for real change makers to be successful, they should sit within the sales department. I just want to sort of throw back to you in terms of what's the what's the way to make sure that you don't then have a scenario where sales and marketing are not aligned? Well, the, the answer to this is that, um, that, you know, the direction of travel is that sales and marketing are getting closer and closer together. Um, I've just flown in from Chicago where we, we've run a, um, a, web, uh, a, a workshop around um, having sales and marketing people together. But also ultimately what we're trying to do is that, you know, that if we, as soon as we talk about content, you know, it, are salespeople going to create content? Well, they should. Are marketeers going to create content? Well, they should. And um, but what's the right content for the right person? Because if I want to sell to you, Carlos, the, mm. what I shouldn't be doing really is taking brand marketing and saying, "Hey, this is really great." Because you'll go, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> um, um, you know, I need to actually create something for you. Now, it could be the sales that needs to do that, and it may need to be um, um, a marketing that does it. The, the question you said around change makers, what we're, what we're seeing, certainly the research that we use in the book was from Google, is that uh, traditionally what we've had is this, this internal salesperson. So if you do Miller Hyman or anything like that, that they've, they've talked about this, in the, this internal salesperson that will help you sell. What we have is a different type of person. Um, and Google reckons this person is between the age of 28 and 35, which means that they, have, they understand social, but they have business acumen. They actually don't care which product is, is, is going to be bought. What they want to do is use their, um, their political capital to take something and make sure it's transformational within the organization. And the change makers certainly that you're selling to are people that are actually quite difficult to find because they won't have they won't, they'll have influence, but won't have authority. Mm -hmm. So they won't be VPs, but they're the people that the VPs turn to and say, Hey, Carlos, someone's come to me about new telephone system. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And those people are used to using their networks to ask questions because they grew up using text texting and, um, asking people, you know, when are you going to go to the pub and when are you going to do this and when are you going to do this? Uh, you know, I, um, you know they're, they're the people that you see on Facebook saying, I'm looking to buy a new car. What do you think I should get? Cool. And, um, and in terms of for organizations trying to really identify who change makers are, hmm. what, what do you think is the best approach to that? Um, ch- change makers will be on social. They will probably be on Twitter. Um, it's one of the things that I've, I, I try and get people to, to understand when I get a lot of people coming to me saying LinkedIn, especially in the B2B space, LinkedIn is social selling and it's not, it's, it's a tool that helps social selling. Social selling is far wider than that. You know, it's Instagram, it's Facebook, it's Twitter, different people within your accounts will be on different places. Um, but generally you will find change makers on, on social and they may not have a lot of followers, but it's about trying to sift through, you know, you're kind of panning for gold to trying to find that person. Um, 
that person, when you meet them, will give you a hard time. So quite often, you know, the salesperson turns up and goes through the slides and they come out of the meeting thinking that, that actually it was a really bad meeting because the, the change, what the change maker wants to do is expend their own political capital. So they're going to be, they're going to take your product forward and, and, and in terms of the new project, they're going to expend their political capital and become VP. So they want to make sure it's right. So they will take each salesperson and nail them pretty much to the wall. Mm -hmm. around um you know talking about roi or um the things how the product how the how the project may fail um and um because they they there is no way that they're going to make sure they're going to make sure that that project is going to fail and what about flipping it around what about for individuals um we've chatted briefly about this before around those individuals that are possibly a bit apprehensive about making the shift to online so they may have an incredible um influence and reach offline they may have fantastic interpersonal skills but just they feel a little bit weary about making that shift and having more of a social presence yeah it's, it's something that we deal with a, a lot with people it's making that jump and, and unfortunately uh well first first and foremost everybody needs to have a personal brand um, we, everybody checks everybody else out on social now. It's, it's, it's become the norm. It's not stalking. It's, it's, it's normal. So, you know, if I get a cold call, if I get a, an email coming in, um, um, uh, if anyone contacts me, the first thing I do is I check them out. Um, and when you look at someone's, um, LinkedIn profile or your social media profile, you jump to a conclusion and and what you're able to do uh, through your social media profiles is actually get people to come to the conclusion that you want them to um and the the mistake that people always make is that they think it's all about either they need to show that they're clever um or what they try and do is what they do is what we you know is talk in business jargon you know they'll say you know Lots i'm buzzwords <laughs> yeah 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 you know i'm a i'm an i'm an energetic enthusiastic passionate, um, tenacious um, salesman. We're all those things. You've just told me that you're the same as everybody else. But the whole point is the fact that we're supposed to be standing out. Um, and, and, I, and what I'm doing as someone, as a buyer, is I'm looking for somebody to help me and guide me. You know, if, if, if I want to buy, um, if I want to spend £100,000 on a new Mercedes, for, for, I want to make sure I've made the right decision. And what I'm looking for is somebody not that's just going to um, say, yeah, that it's parked out the front. Do you want the keys? Do you want to have a drive? I want someone that's going to say, well, have, you, know, you know, which, which type of sporty wheels do you want? And what we're doing is that we're constant looking for people that, are, that will help us. And, and people with very wooden or CV style LinkedIn profiles, they just won't get the, 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 um, the connection. Now, to do social selling right, you need to be getting inbound. So... Us as an organization, we get three pieces of inbound every single day. And you need to be using your social profiles, not just to, to tick boxes because there's a HubSpot article that says these are the top 10 things you need to be a social seller. You need to be using social as a proactive tool to get you leads and meetings and get you revenue. And, and the way that you do that or the way that you start doing that is getting inbound. You'll start getting it one a month, one a week, and then like us, you know, we get inbound every single day. That's impressive. Um, and in terms of tactically, the things you do to really drive that, you talked a lot in the book about some fantastic tools that you use. Um, naturally, the MarTech space is constantly changing and there's a tool at every sort of few months that pops up. What would you recommend that's not in the book already in terms of tools that are really helpful for driving your presence? Um, well, the tools that we use internally is that we... Um, uh, we use Sales Navigator as a way of, uh, you know, in the old days, what you did with, with cold calling is that you get a list of 100 people and you phone them and it's like throwing mud at the wall and hoping it will stick. Whereas um, if you use something like Sales Navigator, it will say these are the 10 people that you need to contact. Now, obviously, if, if on LinkedIn you look like a spammer, they're not going to contact you, so which is why you need to have a personal brand. Um, so Sales Navigator is one of those things. Um, we're, um, we're also working a lot now with the uh, Microsoft social engagement tool, part of um, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, uh, which is a way of you listening to, to, to get intent data. And that's something that we're finding more and more companies are, are starting to look at. Um, yeah, 
So everybody, when they're uh, online, they, they're leaving digital footprints. And it may be anything from, I'm thinking of buying a new HR system to, have you got a, uh, has anyone got a, um, a template for a business case for a, a, an HR system? Different parts of the, the, of, of the, the sales um, pipeline, but there's, there's still these questions going on and there's intent out there that, that, that can be picked up. Um, we use Lead Feeder. Um, in terms of the, the, um, our website. So we can't actually tell the person who's coming to the website, but the organization. Mm -hmm. um, and we use brand watch as a way of, of measuring and getting data uh, because I think it's really important that um, when you talk to an organization, you can kind of say, well, you're rubbish online. And they go, yeah, but what does that mean? Okay, well, here are the charts that show compared to your competition, this is, you know, this is how, this is what your share of voice is or something like that. Um, so uh, they're the, they're the, the and, and we use PASL as well. So PASL is a, um, a way of um, uh, creating blogs very, very quickly. Right. Great. There was definitely two in there that I, I wasn't aware of. So I definitely. Okay. Right. That. Okay. Good. Um, and then asking a question about a company level and also actually individuals, um, who do you look at and think that is doing a fantastic job right now in terms of driving their presence? Um, and possibly some of our, our listeners are from more traditional industries. So if there's somebody, whether that be an individual or whether that be an organization where you see them really breaking the mold. Um, we're, we're seeing a lot of um, B2B IT companies really doing, doing well. Um, uh, and, and a lot of them, you know, for example, um, SAP, you know, they've announced that they've, they've got, um, a billion euros of, of pipeline through, um, uh, social selling. Um, they're a 30 billion euro company. So whether you think that's a lot or as, as a percentage, it's, it's, um, and we're seeing a lot of organizations, um, especially in the inside sales arena in Europe. Um, have now stopped outbound because they found that using social is far more efficient and far more effective. Um, and they're able to actually increase the, 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 um, uh, their reach and the return that they've got. Um, you know, we're seeing, um, well, I, I mean, I'll, you know, someone like Alex Lowe, who works for me is, is, is got a fantastic, uh, personal brand. Um, and he's doing a lot of videos, especially around sales navigator, um, you know, there's people like Coca Sexton um, uh, from a social selling perspective, uh, you know, great, great brand. Um, and um, oh, there's a whole bunch of people out there that, uh, that, that, that have got some really good, um, uh, you know, are writing really good content. Great. Thank you. Um, you talked quite a lot about some predictions you had in social selling, personal brand, technology and beyond. Um, Obviously, since the book's published, is there anything additional that you'd predict is going to happen within the marketing sales space? I think one is, um, one is about the intent data that I mentioned before. Everything now we're seeing is based around data. So, you know, you can find um, the people that you need to sell to. Uh, you can find out what they're, uh, they're talking about. You can also find people online that may be looking for your products and service. Um, and you don't have to have massively expensive projects to actually do that. It's just about being a little bit more, you know, we've always used the term working smarter. It's just really about uh, as sales, salespeople spending the time in the right areas that we, we need to, rather than just throwing mud at the wall. Um, but um, I think the other thing that I, if you, you asked the question about a, a chapter, I think the chapter that I would write would be around um, return on investment. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote an article, um, it's just coming up to its three year anniversary, which was um, how to make 10 C-level meetings a week using Twitter. Um, and I still get asked the question, um, you know, can you make, is there an ROI with social selling? It's like, well, if you made 10 C-level meetings a week for the, for the last three years, you'd have, I think it's about 1500. So your pipeline would be looking very different. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we're now used to getting, you know, we're very now clear on what the ROI is, what the ROI can be achievable and the metrics through the pipeline uh, and for different um, uh, uh, verticals that we can, you know, and, and, and the ROI is very, very clear 
Um, whereas I think probably when I wrote the book back in 2015, it was still quite nebulous in mm -hmm. terms of that. That and we hadn't had a lot of the case studies like the SAP one that's been that, that they've publicised and stuff like that. So that that has, has been the thing that's I think that's really changed. That's been great. Thanks, Tim. Um, I'm conscious of your time. Have you got any more advice you would have for our listeners in terms of how to really, really drive things forwards, whether that be at an organization or an individual level? The, the, the thing that they, um, uh, people need to do individually is you need to have a personal brand. W whatever, you know, there's a, there's a saying that a, a fool with a tool is still a fool. And, you know, you can spend an awful lot of time. We go into a lot of organizations and they say, yeah, we bought this tool. We go, why? And they go, we don't know. And, 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 and then you say, and then we gave it to the sales force. And I said, what happened? Nothing. Okay. Right. Well, well that's what I'd expect. You know, um, you know, people need to understand why they're being social. Mm -hmm. And, and part of that process is about getting the personal brand and, and also changing the mindset mindset about, about being, about being social. Um, and, and that sometimes can take, it's, it's not necessarily an hour or a day. It can sometimes take weeks for them to, to, to understand that mindset. Um, so definitely get a personal brand. Um, and, and also listen, you know, find out what other people are doing, find out what other people are saying, get a view for, you know, listen to, 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 to people that are, that are talking about social selling, you know, read articles and, and get it and get a, an opinion of yourself about what you think is right and wrong. Um, because you know, there's a lot of people doing it wrong and, and being quite spammy. Um, and, um, that's their view and that's their viewpoint. Um, and I think that, you know, if you spend some time thinking about and, and using some common sense, just by listening and reading what people are doing, you can get a view and, and get up to date. And at the end of the day, Personal brands are not going away. Social media is not going away. Social selling is not going away. You, you know, there's a, to use the old phrase, you know, there is a train leaving the station and you need to be on it to be, re, to be relevant in 2018. Couldn't agree more. Thank you. Just a reminder to everyone that's listening that you can see Tim in person at our MarTech Festival um, October of this year. Um, I just want to thank Tim for his time um, and from myself and the listeners. It's been absolutely fantastic 